Hey there, subscribe to my channel, and also press this bell icon so you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Part 1 You are going to hear a conversation about purchasing a cellular phone. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 6. Excuse me, can you give me some information about purchasing a cellular phone? Of course, my pleasure. We carry all sorts of phones from the most basic phones to very sophisticated web-enabled phones. I will do my best to help you find a phone that suits your needs. Thanks. I'm looking for two cellular phones, one for me and one for my son. I think I won't need anything too sophisticated. Just your basic phone functions. But maybe my son will like something with more functions. Sure, well, let's take a look. So you have no preferences at all? What about the size or colour? How about the brand? Well, I don't really care what brand the cell phone is, but I guess I don't want anything that's too big or too small. I want a phone that can fit nicely in my hand and in my pocket. If it's too big, it might be too heavy, and if it's too small, I might lose it. Colour I don't really care about either. Well, I don't want a pink phone. Ah, OK. So let's look for something suitable for a working person. How about this one? This one is the R55. It is black. Not too big, not too small. All the usual functions. The best feature of the R55 is that it can be used worldwide, even in Europe or Asia. It looks good. How much does it cost? It is only $100. If you sign up for a calling plan, then we will give you a $50 discount on the phone. How old is this model, though? I don't want anything that's too old. This model was introduced into the market about three years ago, so it is a bit older, but be assured it will still work fine. Well, I think I still want something not as old. How about from last year? Any good phones from around that time? Yes, there are some. How about this one? It's the new model of the phone you just looked at, called the W55. Most of the features are the same. There are some new features on the W55, though. The battery will last up to two days longer, and the overall weight of the phone is lighter. How much is this one? This is selling for $150. If you purchase it along with a phone plan, then it will be only $100. OK, I think I'll take this one. Now, I need to pick up a phone for my son. I think he'll want something more trendy, so how about a new model for him? Nothing too extravagant or expensive, though. This right here is the newest offering from the leading company in the cellular phone business. The phone is called the Rocket. It is well suited for teenage users. Among the teen-friendly features are 10 songs to choose from, a free messaging system that allows friends to send texts to each other, and voice recognition dialing. The thing most younger users like about the Rocket is that it has a screen that changes colours. All this for only $100 with a purchase of a one-year phone plan. Sounds like something my son will like. Can I sign us both up at once? Yes, of course. Both of you can share one plan. You will pay only $50 a month for both of you to share a plan. That's it? Only $50 a month? Yes, that's all. Now look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 7 to 10. OK. I will need your information. Name and address, please. Richard Derek Jones. What's your profession? I'm an engineer. Address, please. 322 First Street, San Francisco, California. And phone number, please. 
three six zero seven six zero one. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong number. Six two one three six zero seven six one zero. How many phones do you want activated onto your plan? Two for now. Thank you very much. Your phones will be ready in a minute. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a salesman giving information to house owners about an alarm system. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Thank you for inviting me to your residence meeting. My name is Martin Pugh from Safe Cell Alarms. I'm going to explain a little bit about home security, and I hope you'll all feel a bit better informed, and perhaps that you will even purchase one of the alarms we sell. It is all too easy these days for people to break into our homes. Did you know that 25% of all burglaries are committed by burglars breaking and entering via the back door? Even though it is locked, it is still relatively easy for someone to gain entry. And there are parts of our house that we think are not vulnerable because they look inaccessible. But they're not. So, if you're trying to protect your home, you should make sure the top floor is covered by that protection, not just the ground floor. We believe that the only way to secure your property is by having an alarm fitted. Just having the alarm on the outside can put burglars off, and we also recommend that you warn them about the alarm. To do this, we suggest you stick a sign in the front window of the house so it can be seen clearly. This alone should be enough to dissuade a burglar before they start. Now, our company has a range of alarms on offer, and I brought several along for you to see tonight. But let me just explain a few things about them. First of all, all of our alarms are highly visible. They're colored red, and on the underneath, there is a blue light, which you can see whether they are switched on or not. This acts as a deterrent to burglars, who can see it as an active alarm system. Like most systems, our alarms are very sensitive, so you do need to look after them. You may be surprised to hear that a cat can often slink around unnoticed under the infrared beams, but a spider crawling across them will set them off. Also, our system is a little different from some. Most companies offer an option that connects their alarms to the police station. All our alarms have an automatic link to our company office. This means we can deal with a situation promptly and can sort out any alarms that have gone off by mistake. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Okay, let me tell you about the installation of our alarms. Later on, I'll show you some house plans and diagrams of how the alarms operate. But you don't have to worry about them being intrusive, as we normally put them in hallways rather than individual rooms. The diagrams show you how the beams work to cover the whole house in this way. Oh, one small thing while I remember is don't leave your security code in your house. A lot of people keep it in the kitchen or their study, but we suggest you leave it with a neighbor so that if there is a break-in, the burglars can switch the system off. Now, regarding the practical aspects of installation, I know that many of you are out all day, and I'm afraid we don't install the alarms at weekends. But we do offer a service where we can fit the alarm system in the evenings for you. But we do charge a little bit extra for that. Finally, we do offer a range of systems, so I suggest you look at the leaflets on our prices. And please don't be put off from investing in a more sophisticated system to protect your home, as we do allow you to set up a monthly payment if it's too much in one go. Okay, now if you'd like to come forward. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear an introduction about canoeing. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Have you imagined paddling around on a river in a small boat? Canoes which are narrow boats and usually hold one or two people at the most are particularly well known for being unstable and turning over in the water. But more and more people enjoy this dangerous sport. Today, Cynthia Bocci an adult education teacher and an addict of canoeing as well will share her experience of canoeing with us. Cynthia, when did you begin this sport? Well, I started it six or seven years ago, and soon I got attracted by the exercise. I have to admit that it brings me great fun. It's become part of my life. So, could you describe how you do it? At first, I think you need some like-minded friends. The friends who share the same interest with you. It's no fun at all if you canoe alone. Usually, we assemble in a parking shelter near the Island Lake Recreation Area. We pull our canoes from inside the vans, lift them from atop the cars and trucks, and attach wheels to help transport them to the shores of the lake beside the boat dock. What equipment do you need for the sport? Well, first and foremost, a canoe, of course. The price ranges from £300 to £700, depending on the material they're made from. The more you can pay, the better, really. Personally, I wouldn't look at anything under £500, but that obviously depends on your budget. You also need a hard helmet to protect yourself against rocks when you fall out of the canoe, and believe me, that is very likely to happen. Because of this, it's a must for a beginner to wear a wetsuit. Oh, bathing suits don't work, really. 
Sometimes a life jacket is a necessity, in case you fall into water and no one else is nearby. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Think it's all worth it? Absolutely. I just love it. It's exciting, exhilarating, yet it's peaceful and it's calm. You can work as hard as you want to, or you can take it easy. In addition to having fun, canoeing offers a workout without realizing you're working out. Besides being a great exercise, which is good to heart and lungs, you gain strength and mobility. You build strength not only by paddling, but also from lifting and carrying your canoes. You can also exercise your mobility. Frankly, I never had upper body strength until I started canoeing. Now I can pick my canoe up and carry it on my shoulder with no problem. However, it's not just a workout of the upper body, but also a total body workout, if you're doing it correctly. It's a great calorie burner. And more important to me, paddling isn't strictly about exercise. It's as much about the peace and relaxation that comes from being out on the water. I saw it described on a brochure as liquid medicine for the soul, and that is so accurate. It allows you to take a mental break from your ordinary routine. It's a lot of fun, and you meet a lot of great people. We connect on the waterways by responding to email invitations, posting on websites and club announcements. Also, it's a great way to get an up-close view of nature. You can sneak up on wildlife. I've been right next to ducks, deer and all kinds of birds. You just get a different view than you can get on land. I especially enjoy camping by canoe. It's like backpacking without having to carry a pack on your back. You can put everything you need in the hatches of the canoe. Have you experienced this kind of camping? Well, whatever you say about this sport, it's never dull. I think on one level it's a serious activity and you can become a real champion, but it's a small group who take it that far. But for most it's a fantastic sport for anyone who likes adventure. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to listen to a lecture on language learning. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. This is the first in our series of lectures on language learning. The topic I'd like to deal with today is what makes a successful language learner? There's been a lot of research into what makes some people learn a language faster than others. In this lecture, 
I'll summarize the main findings of the research into the subject. There are many factors that influence how quickly one learns a foreign language, of which exposure to the target language seems to be one of the most important factors to consider. It's this factor which determines the speed of learning a language, especially among those people who learn a foreign language outside the classroom. There are more people who did not learn a second language or a third language in the classroom, and I think that understanding how learners successfully learn languages without the help of a teacher can provide us with the key to how to become a successful language learner. Let's look then at the characteristics of a successful language learner. Motivation seems to be one of the key factors. Research into motivation has identified two main types, instrumental motivation and integrative motivation. Instrumental motivation is the kind of motivation that encourages people to learn a language for practical reasons, such as getting a job or passing an examination. Learners with this kind of motivation intend to use the target language as a tool or instrument to help them achieve a goal. Integrative motivation is what encourages learners to learn a language in order to communicate and socialize with others who speak the language. The primary aim for learners with integrative motivation is to use the language to integrate and identify with the community that uses the language. Immigrants, or people who are married to speakers of another language, are motivated in this way. Although most people have mixed motivation, research into language learning and acquisition suggests that integrative motivation produces much better results and is an important characteristic of successful language learners. Personality is another important factor in language learning. One does not need to be an extrovert to learn a foreign language, but willingness to experiment and take risks is essential. Introverted or anxious learners who are afraid of making mistakes find it harder to learn a language. Good language learners will try to experiment with different ways of learning vocabulary or grammar until they find the way that suits them best. Language is a complex system. Successful language learners often design complex learning systems to master a language. They think about how they learn and organize their learning accordingly. They develop their own learning style and use a range of learning skills such as efficient revision techniques, systems for learning and organizing vocabulary, the ability to monitor their own speech, and the ability to plan their learning. Finally, age is another major factor to be borne in mind. Children seem to be in the best position to learn a foreign language rapidly and with the best results. Older learners can also be very successful and become proficient at using a language. Adult learners who make decisions about their learning and are independent of the teacher, who are analytical and aware of how they learn and who take responsibility for their learning, stand a very good chance of learning a foreign language successfully. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.